Hello, I'm Kim Beaton, and today we're going to make a half-life size human figure. Now, the reason we're using an armature that looks like this is because some people don't have a shop with a lot of tools. And this is one of the easiest ways, if you have just a simple set of normal tools, you should be able to build a figure this size. When doing a human figure, you really do need to know how tall it is. So starting from the beginning, draw an upper part, the floor, then go halfway. Draw a single bar, that's your spine. Go from here down to the ground. Then establish your foot, put a dot there. Go halfway up, that's the knee. Halfway up is the hip. Two thirds of the way up is the shoulders. Then two thirds above that is the head, rib cage, put a hand in there. And that is how you do an armature that is uniformly correct. By drawing that simple set of rules, you will always be proportional. This is how I established what the pose was doing, is I got a piece of clay. There's not an armature inside this. I don't think it's necessary. It's just a gestural little sketch with a bunch of clay. I mean, it's really floppy. But I'm able to shift it and move it and find out exactly where that should be sitting. Once I've got this, I can bend the armature that I've built to whatever I want. There's always a point at the bottom and the weight swells up in either a triangle or a teardrop shape above it. Since we've built this armature without welded rod, because I assume you may not have that, I can still shift this. I can still get this armature and shift it around. And as the weight of it settles in, I can tweak the composition to even a better arrangement. I'm gonna start putting tinfoil on. And to do that, I'm going to do standard écorché. I'll show you one of my students' works. An écorché is the human figure, its bones, and its major muscle groups. And it's a way to practice how to do the human figure correctly. By building that up slowly, all your muscles are in the correct configuration every single time. Now the nice thing about tinfoil is you can pre-shape the muscles. If I put in two of the correct muscle groups, and I, I take some time and I shape them up nice. I make sure that it looks and feels like the muscle. It's always about silhouettes. It's making that silhouette look beautiful and then making this silhouette look beautiful. If you nail that cross-section and this cross-section, most of the stuff between is gonna work out just fine. All of this tinfoil is fluffy. We don't want to compress it down. We go poof and we sculpt up absolutely to the final surface. Once you've done that and the sculpture looks absolutely gorgeous, then you compress it. And once it starts to compress, it gets really hard really fast. See, now we're getting it. It's starting to look nice and I just build up slowly from the bottom. As you can see, the lower half is virtually established. We have the silhouettes of these limbs, side and front. So it's taken me about an hour to get to here, and I suspect it will take me about another hour to fill out the rest of the body and in this rough tinfoil shape. A lot of people are unaware of what makes a face identifiable. If I were to ask an ordinary person, so what is the most distinguishing feature of a person's face? And they might say the eyes, they might say the nose, the lips. And I said, if the person isn't facing you, can you tell who they are? And one thing that identifies us more than anything else is the overall shape of the skull. Now, since I had that wire and I inflated both sides, I know that that face is centered and is perpendicular and everything else will match it. Virtually everything is in place. 
all the muscles are on. Now, I'm going to preset a steel armature in her skin. What that means is I'm going to push a groove into this area and then I'm going to gently lay a steel rod in any area I think might be compromised. This piece of wire has now been set so it comfortably lays inside that groove, right? I'm going to glue it in place. So maybe three locations total and let that cure. We have wire armatures everywhere. This, she's a small figure. I don't need a lot of wire sticking out all over the place. I'm going to get a bunch of sticks and I'm going to hot glue them straight down to the ground to support the weight. You're going to have a scratch coat that is about an eighth of an inch thick or two mil. Then you're going to have your surface coat, which can fluctuate wildly between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. I am scooping, placing Pal Tire Premium into the bottom of a bread mixer. That's kicking up dust, and I've got a dry towel that's covering it. Now, what I'm looking for is cookie dough, but I'm looking for a cookie dough that doesn't grip to the walls and doesn't cling to the spindle. The more you mix it, the softer it becomes to a certain point. So we wait. Now I'm gonna gently layer up about an eighth of an inch thickness. Now it has to be thin enough that it doesn't interfere with the overall mass. I'm taking little tiny daubs and I'm smoothing it out. Now the tin foil has grip. That's why we like tin foil. So many reasons to love it, but that's one of the many in that it's got such a key that I am able to just literally place it on there upside down. It stays. It's very good that this is only half coverage of the figure. Because now I can concentrate on getting a very good scratch coat before advancing to the rest of the figure. Ordinary fork. We are going to put grooves in this, preferably along the lines of flow. This is what keys the next coat into it. And here we are at the end of the first day. You're seeing essentially five and a half hours of work. We've gotten virtually everything done. We've got a beautiful armature. We've got reinforcing rods through everything. We've got a scratch coat everywhere. Now we have to wrap this. We're going to use more tin foil and cover it everywhere. Tomorrow I will unwrap the tin foil wrap the entire sculpture in wet towels, and then wrap it again in tinfoil. Next episode, join us as we finish this. We'll be adding all the surface detail and it will be absolutely gorgeous.